Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over one of the best trickster builds you can use, especially after the latest patch, nerfing a couple of mods that a lot of people seem to use with trickster builds that made them really overpowered. But since some of them got nerfed and some of them also got buffed, I believe this is going to be the next best or at least in the top 5 of trickster builds you can use. Just take a look at it, I'm absolutely demolishing bosses left, right and center, it's almost too easy. And also with the amount of mobility that this build has, it really matches that trickster playstyle. Just teleporting behind enemies non-stop and just constantly clearing them out quick and easily. So, saying all of that, let's dive into the build starting off with the skills. So for our first skill, we're going to go with Hunt the Prey for literally a ridiculous amount of reasons. First one, obviously it's going to give us a lot of mobility to move around the map, which is what you want as a trickster. It's also going to give us a shield, so when we do activate it, we also get a bit of protection when we dive into, let's say, a huge group of enemies. But the main reason for it is because of the class tree. Oh my god, the amount of things in here that increase its about everything is ridiculous. It increases our weapon damage by 35% for 8 seconds when we activate it. It increases our, our resistance piercing bonus as well for 25 by 25% 25 for 10 seconds. And it also increases our anomaly power by 50% for 10 seconds. It just gives us a ridiculous amount of buffs. And the way I have this build set up is if our anomaly power increases, our firepower increases. And if our resistance piercing increases, our firepower increases and our anomaly power increases. Everything works as a chain. So if one thing goes up, another two or three things increase as well. And the last thing about this skill is it's also going to be used to keep our ammo full. Like every time we use the skill Hunt the Prey, I have a mod that will instantly reload the magazine of your weapon. So you'll basically never run out of ammo. You can infinitely shoot your weapon and you will have infinite bullets. Like you'll just never run out. So that kind of covers everything for Hunt the Prey. So let's hop on over to Temporal Blade, the second skill. Now this one we're actually not going to use for damage at all. Very similar to Hunt the Prey, there's a bunch of nodes in the well i think there's a few nodes in the class tree and then a few nodes in the uh pax tree as well there's just a lot of things left right and center it's a little hard to organize it all but so when we activate the skill temporal blade we're going to increase our resistance piercing by 30 percent and again that's going to increase our anomaly power fire power crit damage it just increases everything and it's also going to increase our armor piercing by 30 percent as well for 10 seconds so that's going to help out with the damage our weapon's going to do. Then when we hop on over to the Ascension tree, or no, the Pax tree, there are some other nodes in here as well. Whenever we activate this skill, it's going to increase our assault weapon damage by 50% for 7 seconds. That's just absolutely crazy. We get a couple of buffs with this one skill. And again, we're not using it for its damage alone. We're using it to just supercharge our character which is pretty much what Hunt the Prey and Temporal Blade is going to do for us. Just activate Hunt the Prey, follow up with Temporal Blade, and your character is going to be juiced. You're going to take out elites, captains, grunt level enemies so quick and easily. It's, it's going to feel a little bit too easy for you. But anyways, let's go on to our last skill, which is Twisted Rounds. Now, this one is very straightforward. It's just going to increase the damage of our bullets by... For me, I have it at 96,000 firepower. It's going to increase my firepower by 96,000. And obviously, that's without being charged up or anything. This is just my character sitting static with no skills activated, no kills, no nothing. So that number is going to shoot up through the roof like crazy when we get this build going. Now, that kind of covers everything for the skills. So let's hop on over to the weapon. And for that, we're going to want to use an Assault Rifle with the Tactical Variation because it is the hardest hitting variation out of the other two, just hands down in terms of damage, uh, what's it called, rounds per minute, crit damage, it's just better all around. So again, Burst Fire Variation is the way to go. Now with this here, there is one attribute you will want to have and that is crit damage because a lot of our damage against those bosses is going to be crit damage and with the way I have this build set up is crit shots are going to do a ridiculous amount of damage it's going to feel like if you're playing another shooter game where you know you shoot an enemy in the chest a couple of times you know they're going to die but if you shoot someone in the head like once or twice they are dead instantly the reward for getting headshots with this build is so high you'll definitely want to aim for it 
So crit damage is an absolute must for the attributes. The other attributes, I have close range damage, which is really good. But again, it is not needed as much as crit damage. And then I also have status power, which our build doesn't really rely on status power at all. So it's kind of a wasted attribute. So we have about two out of three attributes, which is really nice. Then for the mods, which is this one is absolutely huge, just as big as crit damage. You'll want to have anomaly enhancement. 40% of our anomaly power gets turned into firepower. So we're going to get a massive, massive firepower boost just from this one mod. So you'll want crit damage and anomaly enhancement. Then for the second mod, I would highly recommend using either Dark Sacrifice to increase your weapon damage by 35%. Or you can go with Fortress that's going to increase your weapon damage by 25%, but also increase your armor and resistance. It's kind of one of those two you can play with yourself. If you want more damage, obviously Dark Sacrifice. But if you feel like you're getting too close to dying a lot, then go with Fortress just to increase your survivability. Now, with the third mod for this weapon, I actually got kind of screwed over with it, so you don't need a third mod at all. I have Perpetual Mobile. Whenever we kill an enemy, when we have 35% less ammo in the magazine, our magazine gets instantly replenished. This here is not needed at all. If you can, try to get something that increases your weapon damage, firepower, anomaly power, or even protection. So I basically have the two mods, Anomaly Enhancement, Dark Sacrifice, and the one attribute, Crit Damage. Those are the three things you'll want to have, because they're just going to do the most for you. That's all you need. If you get a bonus mod, perfect. If not, don't even worry about it. So that covers everything for the weapon. So let's hop on over to the armor now. And we'll start off with the helmet, or to be more exact, the helmet of Maxwell's Demon. Now this thing is phenomenal. The legendary set bonus is, it sounds a little tricky with the wordplay, but pretty much each successful shot that we land with our assault weapons, for example, our assault rifle, SMG, double guns, LMGs, all that kind of good stuff, it increases our firepower up to 50%. And to get to 50%, we need to spend 50% of the ammo in our magazine as successive attacks, which means... You just have to land 50% of the shots in your weapon to get 50% increased firepower. Very easy and straightforward. Once you reach that 50% firepower, it actually gets doubled to 100% increased firepower again, but this only lasts for half of, the, half of the rounds in the magazine. So after you shoot about half of the magazine worth of bullets, the buff, the what's called the legendary set, restarts itself and you kind of have to build it back up. Very easy, straightforward, and it doesn't really take anything to get going. Just play the game how you normally would, shooting enemies, and your damage is going to rapidly increase. Now, for the attributes on this here, it comes amazing. Bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, and close range damage. Literally, exactly what we need. I mean, obviously, anomaly power would be another really good attribute to have, but these come locked in, so nothing we can do about it. A bunch of damage and some utility for our skills. Now for the mods, it comes with dum dum bullets. This is just going to increase our assault weapon damage by 12%. Very straightforward. And this mod always comes with it, which is what I really, really like. It's a helpful mod, and we don't have to worry about getting two out of the three mods or anything like that. Then the third, the second mod, I swapped it out for instant reload. Whenever we activate Hunt the Prey, we're going to instantly replenish all the ammo in our magazine. And because the cooldown on it is so short, we're basically going to be able to have infinite ammo for the entire time. As long as there's an enemy to teleport behind, you will always have always have your ammo pretty much filled up. Like, you'll never run out of ammo. You'll have infinite ammo. Very straightforward. I don't know why I keep going on it, but yeah. Then for the bonus mod, I got Bloodlust. Now, this one is kind of a burner mod because I already have it on another piece of armor, so it's a dead mod slot. If you can get something that's going to increase your weapon damage, firepower, anomaly power, even protection, just... Something like that there, more useful, but again, you gotta go with, with what you get. So that covers everything for the helmet, so let's hop on over to the chest piece. And again, we're going with another piece of the Maxwell Demon. Coming in with the same attributes, again, bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, and close range damage. Now for the mods on this one, I actually got, like, really lucky with it rolled. It came with personal space, which is kind of a dead mod, even though I just said it came perfectly rolled, but... Personal Space is a solid mod. It's going to increase our close range damage by 12%. And since we're playing as a Trickster class, we're always going to be within close range to enemies. So we're always going to have that damage buff going. Then the second mod, I actually swapped it out for Anomaly Echo. This is definitely one of the largest mods you want to have. It works insanely well. 
whenever we activate a skill, we're going to increase our firepower. For me, it's 121,000 and anomaly power by 113,000 for 6 seconds. But the thing is, is that when we increase, when our anomaly power gets increased, our firepower is also going to be increased. So it's basically increase our firepower and then increase our firepower again. It's just a huge, uh, huge mod that's just going to jack up our character like crazy. Then for the bonus mod, this one is really good. I actually love this one a lot. It helps out a ton for protection. Self-medication. Increase your max health by 20% when any skill starts its cooldown. Stacks up to three times. Uh, stacks up to three times, each lasting for five seconds. So after we activate Hunt the Prey, the Sword Slicing skill, our health gets increased by 40%. This is what's going to keep us alive. Well, not only this year, obviously killing enemies is going to, you know, give us our health back or shield, all that kind of stuff. But this one is a huge, huge defense mod. You always want to have at least one or two defense mods on your build just to keep you going or in case you get in a sticky situation. So if you can, self-medication is huge. If not, the same thing as the headpiece, try to get damage, weapon damage, firepower, anomaly power or protection. That's just like the main thing for it. So now let's go over to the legs. And this is going to be the third piece of the Maxwell Demon set. Now, again, same attributes, bonus firepower, cooldown reduction, close range damage. Perfect, phenomenal, what's not to love? Now, the mod that comes with this is Bloodlust. And again, on my helmet, I already have Bloodlust, so Bloodlust. So it's kind of a, a wasted mod slot. Well, not really, because one of these are activated. So I have Bloodlust to increase our firepower by 20. Well, for me, it's for 20,000. Stacking up to three times, deteriorating every five seconds. It's not really that huge of a mod, but it does help out a little bit. Now, the mod that I swapped out for is Achilles Heal. This one is actually really, really huge. We're going to increase our critical damage by 50% of our resistance piercing value. Now, later on in the build, when I get into the Clash Tree and some other mods, I'm able to get around 100% a 100% resistance piercing bonus. So this is going to increase our critical damage by 50%. Definitely a mod you're going to want to have on. Really needed. Then the bonus mod isn't anything crazy good. Like it's not amazing, but it's not horrible. Move groove. Incre moving increases your anomaly power by, for me, 33,000. And my firepower by 36,000. And again, because of my the way I have my build set up, my anomaly power it gets turned into firepower. So it's just a big firepower boost. But obviously, this works only while you're moving, which isn't a huge issue because as a trickster, you're going to be running around a lot, constantly teleporting behind enemies. You're just always going to be on the move. So let's hop on over to the gloves now. And for that, you can use any kind of purple tier gloves. I happen to land some that have bonus firepower, skill life leech, and close range damage. Two out of the three mod uh, attributes, amazing. Absolutely amazing. But with this setup, the attributes aren't that important. So the mod that came with it is Personal Space, another dead mod slot. I have quite a few dead mod slots, as you can see, and this build is still hitting like an absolute truck. The other mod I swapped it out for is Captain Hunter. Very straightforward, similar to Dum Dum Bullets, except this is going to increase all of our damage done to elites by 16%. Because elites, captains, and bosses... Those are the toughest enemies. Those are the guys you want to do the most damage to. All of those grunt level enemies that you kind of like slap around left and right. You don't need damage for them. You need damage for the bigger guys. And this is exactly what that mod does for us. Very, very good. Then for our bonus mod, I happen to land Resistance Piercer. This is literally the exact same thing as Achilles Heal. Just worded, just worded a little bit differently. Increase your critical damage by... For me right now, it says 15% because my character isn't boosted up or anything. That's going to say close to, I think, 40 to 40 to 50% of increased critical damage. And again, is equal to 50% of your resistance piercing value. Exact same thing as Achilles heal. So with these two mods, we're basically going to get around a 100% increased critical damage. And back to our weapon, it also has 52.4% increased critical damage plus its crit mod uh, multiplier of 164. This is why the build, when you land those headshots, you just destroy enemies easily. Just literally one-tapping them or with bosses, just putting a magazine into them, and that's it. That's literally what makes this build so special is the crit damage. Then for the last piece of armor, we have the boots. Now, I'm going with the, the Yugaki 
or ah oh, man how the fuck do you pronounce this yugaki otara boots yeah I, I don't know how to pronounce it but those right there the attributes on it are kind of decent max health which is you know it's going to help out with survivability then i have close range damage which you know obviously it's going to increase our damage and healing received for some more survivability so nothing too special about it but the mod that comes with it is not impressed this is going to reduce the damage taken from elites by 25 percent so again just something to increase our protection you don't absolutely need these boots but you'll want to have something that increases you know your protection so that's why i grabbed them then the other mod i swapped out for is anomalic uh anomalic caliber twisted rounds whenever we activate twisted rounds or while twisted rounds is activated we receive a 30 percent resistance piercing bonus while the skill is activated and again if we go back to the achilles heal mod and resistance piercer that's just going to increase our critical damage even more and then the bonus mod i actually got insanely lucky this is a def this is another mod that is an absolute must like you need it for the build unstoppable force increase your anomaly power by 50 percent of your resistance piercing bonus now you can literally see anomaly caliber increase our resistance piercing by 30 percent so that one mod right there is going to give us is also going to give us 15 percent increased anomaly power and because we have the mod anomaly enhancement on our assault rifle that also gets turned into firepower again just anomaly power turns into firepower and so on and so on and so on everything just increases our firepower very straightforward that's the best way to word it until now so that covers everything for the armor now before i hop into the class tree i do want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video Deving. if you don't have enough time patience or good enough teammates to get the gear and items you want in a certain game that's perfectly all right because Deving has you covered go to their website www.deving.net to help get boosted in games like destiny 2 division 2 outriders and many more They'll make sure you get your characters leveled up, best setups, guns with high rolls, and much more. The boost works with account sharing as well. They also give you the option to choose exactly what you want them to get for you in that game without the use of cheats or bugs. This is a trustworthy site with over 3,000 reviews on Trustpilot and having a 4.9 out of 5 star rating, so you know these guys are good. The site has been running for many years with a large variety of payment methods. You can use the code DIVINE to get a 15% discount on all services. If you have any questions, you can always contact an operator on the website to help you out. A link to their website will be in the description down below for anyone interested. That's everything for today's sponsor by Deving. Again, thank you for sponsoring this video. Alright guys, so now with the class tree, we're actually going to go with the bottom branch because... This is going to give us the most anomaly power, which in turn is going to turn into firepower. And again, I'll, the firepower will make more sense as I go deeper and deeper into the video. So for our first node, increased anomaly power, straightforward. Our second node, increased resistance piercing by 10%, which again, you know, increases our anomaly power and also increases our crit damage. Then more anomaly power. Then the bottom node here, this one is going to increase our assault weapon damage by 3.5% for each anomaly... Uh, anomaly power node that we get and we get quite a few of them then the second one is another anomaly power node another anomaly power node so just so far that's about four of them so got a good amount of assault weapon damage then we head up the tree we grab uh withers withers sky thing i don't know what this is but anyways this is not important at all we grab a max health which is going to help out with our you know survivability then the top one, the big node, this is what we really want. Whenever we activate a movement skill, for example, Hunt the Prey, we get a 35% increased weapon damage buff for 8 seconds. And our, and our cooldown is about 4.9 seconds or 4.7 4 seconds. I forget what it was, but yeah, we're going to be able to keep this weapon damage buff going the entire time. Then I just happened to grab the two nodes at the top here to increase our close range damage by 15%. And our weapon damage by 15% because those are just two really solid nodes. And once I finished the bottom branch here, there wasn't really anything else for me to grab that was really that valuable. So let's head all the way back to the bottom. Then we grab another increase our resistance piercing bonus by 10%. Again, anomaly power, crit damage, resistance pierce, yada, yada, yada. Uh, another anomaly power node. Then at the bottom here, we grab combat shields timeline. So whenever we activate hunt the prey... We also, we get that 35% weapon damage buff. And because of this here, we get our anomaly power increased by 50% for 10 seconds. 
absolutely huge and monstrous. So then we continue on down the tree, we get another anomaly power node, another anomaly power node, and again, these nodes are also increasing our assault weapon damage, so these are kind of serving a two-in-one purpose. Anomaly power turns into fire power and also increases our weapon damage. There's a lot of back and forth going on in this video, it's a little confusing, but everything just works out in the end. Then we continue down the tree to get skill life leech, which is going to help out with survivability, very nice. Then we go up to this big node here, Leap of Clincher. Whenever we activate Hunt the Prey, we increase our resistance piercing by 25%. Again, increasing our anomaly power, increasing our crit damage, increasing our firepower. I don't know how many times I'm, I've said this, but it's all a little confusing, so I just want to constantly keep saying it all. Anyways, let's go towards the end of the tree here. We get scion of the void at the end of a damage skill we increase our armor piercing by 30 percent and our resistance piercing by 25 percent for 10 seconds now damaging skills consist of twisted rounds which is always going to be activated so we're not going to be able to get this node going the beyblade skill what was the beyblade skill called uh where is it oh cyclone slice huh? beyblade skill but yeah and temporal blade this is what the huge importance is for temporal blade so when we activate it we're going to increase our resistance piercing by 25% for 10 seconds. Also, our armor piercing for, you know, some extra damage, but the resistance piercing is one of the huge things. Then the last node we actually grab at the end of the tree is Shadow's Embrance. Very sim- basically the same thing as Anomaly Enhancement, but not as strong. Your firepower is increased by 15% of your Anomaly power. So if we combine this here with Anomaly Enhancement, right now we're sitting at about a total of 55% of our Anomaly power is- uh, what's it called 55% of our anomaly power in is increased to our fire. Oh my god, I gotta word this better. Our firepower is increased by 55% of our anomaly power. There we go. Damn. <laughs> but, anyways, so that covers everything for the class tree. So, let's hop on over to the pax tree. Now, we're gonna go with the bottom branch here just because it offers us basically the most damage for all around. So, for the first node, we're going with Trigger Man. Your damage is increased by 15% for each skill on cooldown. Usually we'll have about one skill on cooldown just because of how short the cooldowns are in general for our skills. So we'll always be able to have a 15% damage bonus going, sometimes reaching 30%. So, you know, that's it's helpful, but we got to get it no matter what. Then the top here is very useless. Whenever we melee an enemy, they their armor and resistance gets reduced by 40% for 10 seconds. The thing is, we're not going to be punching people. We're going to be hitting people with a strap. We're just shooting everybody left, right, and center. So another kind of a dead node, but oh well, not much we can do. Then the next one, failsafe protocols. When your health drops below 30%, get a 50% shield and 20% damage mitigation for 3 seconds. Failsafe protocol can be triggered every 10 seconds. So this is another node that's really going to help us out with survivability. So if we're ever about to die, this is going to kick in and basically just save our ass. Get another kill, heal up to full health. And if you're activating this more like multiple times within a couple of seconds, then there's something wrong with your build and you know, you kind of need to readjust it. But this should never really activate, but it is a good, you know, safety tool. Then for the next node, this one is probably the biggest node of all. Increase your firepower by 40% of your anomaly power when using an assault weapon. This is why it's really important to use an assault weapon, aside from them being just, you know, the highest damaging weapons in the game. So right now we're sitting at about 40%, uh, what's it called? This here is going to give us 40%, anomaly enhancement gives us another 40%, so we're at 80 then plus that other node in the class tree at the end gives us 15. So we're sitting at about, we increase our firepower by 95% of our anomaly power. That is so, so huge. And if you didn't know this skill twisted rounds, it actually scales off of anomaly power. So the more anomaly power we do, this also turns into firepower, increasing our damage. Everything in the end just goes to increasing our damage. It's ridiculous. Then the last node, this is another big node as well. Crit uh, what's called Perpetuum Trickery. Critical shots increase your anomaly power by 10%, stacking up to five times. The stacks are consumed by the next damage skill you use. So this goes hand in hand with the whole reason we want to land those crit shots to increase our anomaly power, which is then going to increase our firepower and yada, yada, yada. But then the second part to it is when we activate a damaging skill like Temporal Blade, the second skill in our slot, we get an assault weapon damage increase of 50% for 7 seconds. 
that is huge. So basically, we land a bunch of crit shots. We use this the what's it called temporal slice, and we get a fifty percent weapon damage increase for seven seconds. Now, what's really nice about this is this doesn't say you can only have one going at a time. So right when we use temporal slice, and if you land crit shots, you can get fifty percent increased anomaly power and fifty percent increased assault weapon damage for a couple of seconds. You can basically get the best out of both of these. So you're just going to spit out a ridiculous amount of damage. Not only do you do a lot of damage landing headshots, but it also just increases your damage further. Like it just constantly, you just constantly keep racking up damage. It's ridiculous. So that kind of covers the gist of the Pax tree. So let's hop on over to the Ascension tree now. So the main things you're going to want to grab are obviously weapon damage, close range damage, uh, magazine size, then you want to grab like a resistance piercer, anomaly, uh, anomaly power. Everything here is just going to increase your damage. Now, after you get the magazine, you know, weapon damage, close. Oh, that's long range. I got to change that to close range. So I'm actually down 10% damage so far. Wow, I should have changed that. But anyways, so after you get magazine, damage, anomaly power, I would then start to, you know, kind of build up my resistance and armor because our character is pretty, pretty weak because in the class tree, there isn't any nodes that we grab that really increase our armor or resistance. We only have one node that increases our max health, and that's about it. So you'll definitely want to put some points into resistance once you get near the end. Now, guys, that covers everything for this build video. So I do want to give a big shout out to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching, everyone, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.